That really. <laughs> But it that's, really sticks so in your true. head, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's it's so true. So often we want God to come in to our lives and just fix everything, but you know that's that's really the wrong way of looking at it. We should uh, we should pick up our own poop before uh, <laughs> before you know, and then go to God and ask for forgiveness, and then have him come into our lives. Of course he's already there. But if we're uh, if we're wanting God to fix all our mistakes, uh, we're definitely looking at it wrong. Uh, cuz we we have to work on those ourselves for sure. Well, and I think many believers, especially new believers, but even m- many, you know, people who have been Christians, followers of Jesus for decades, they have that idea where evil can never harm the pure of heart. That, yeah. and we still wrestle with that question: Why do bad things happen to good people? Which is sort of a faulty question to ask, because that's, as Jesus would say, "Good, who are you calling good?" That's what he said when the the guy came up and said, "Good teacher." He's like, "There's nobody good but God. Why are you calling me good?" And yeah. the fact we do have an enemy of darkness, who wants to rule the world in darkness. I mean, that's, it's very, very similar philosophically. Um, and even, uh, I think what, sorry, I'm, I'm just looking for the, the quote that you used. Cause I think that it's a part of it. Cause going back to the, the, the crawl. And even at the end, when, when they're banishing darkness to the darkness, to the, to his father, to the stars, whatever it is, he's going, he says, you think you have won, but what is light without dark? What are you without me? I am a part of you all. And I think def- I mean, that is for sure true before Christ, before we do our, our, before we're called to repentance, but like, like that idea that where it goes, no good without evil, no love without hate, no heaven without hell, no light without darkness. What is like, what, what comes to your mind, Brian, when, when you think about that, those concepts applied biblically? Ooh, loaded <laughs> question. It's so huge. That's why I ask it. One I don't try to is- answer it. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus is the light of the world and mm. we he has given us the opportunity to have light in us. And the the weird science behind that is we are bioluminescent. That's something that I put in my books um when someone happens to buy it and I'm there. One thing that I like to write if they ask me to sign it is we are all bioluminescent. We we can't see that we have light in us, but the, we are shining. In fact, we actually shine best during the early afternoon of the day, actually. But I think it's kind of interesting that then they had no idea that we were bioluminescent. But here we are, so many you know, centuries later, there's actually proof that there is light in us and that light leaves when we're gone from here. Mm. So what is the deal with the light? I think the truth is we are from God. We, we know that we want to do the right thing. Most people are moral because they know it's the right thing to do. And God is the truth. And uh, that's where we get our morality from. There's a debates where people don't like the idea of, uh, you know, an atheist might say, well, you can't say that um, I'm not moral. 